Professor Jim Fleming. Thank you. Um, the title of my paper is Taking Responsibilities as Well as Rights Seriously. In his first book, Ronald Dworkin famously called for taking rights seriously by treating them as trumps over considerations of utility or the general welfare. And taking rights seriously provoked calls for taking responsibilities as well as, or instead of rights seriously, or for engaging in responsibility talk, not just rights talk. In Life's Dominion, published in 1993, Dworkin himself got on the responsibility bandwagon in justifying the right to procreative autonomy and the right to die. He countenanced that government may encourage women to take the decision whether to have an abortion responsibly, so long as it does not compel conformity with its view of the responsible decision. Now, in Justice for Hedgehogs, Dworkin reiterates the call for taking rights seriously and for conceiving rights as trumps, and he continues to engage in responsibility talk, for he argues that government must respect individuals' personal responsibility for their own lives. Yet he's largely silent concerning the form of responsibility talk that is evident in life's dominion, namely, allowing government latitude for moralizing or for encouraging people to exercise their rights responsibly, short of compelling them to do what the government thinks is the responsible thing to do. Now, I'm not going to suggest that Dworkin has abandoned such responsibility talk in Justice for Hedgehogs. I'm just going to make the friendly suggestion that he make it clearer and more prominent in the pages of Justice for Hedgehogs that he still stands by those arguments in Life's Dominion. There's a passage at the opening of, part, uh, of the part on politics and justice where he says, I here incorporate by reference my arguments in is democracy <laughs> possible here and in sovereign virtue. So maybe I'm doing nothing more than urging you to add life's dominion in that sentence. But I think I mean to call for a larger addressing of this issue. A few words about the responsibility critique. <clears throat> Both conservative scholars like Marianne Glendon and progressive legal scholars like Robin West on our panel have call, who have called for taking responsibilities seriously, used Dworkin as a liberal whipping boy in arguing that taking rights seriously has denigrated or even excluded concern for responsibilities. Here I'll focus on two charges Glendon and West made against Dworkin. First, they charged that his notion of taking rights seriously excludes taking responsibilities seriously, and in particular, precludes governmental promotion of the moral environment. Second, they charged that on his conception of rights as trumps, rights to privacy or autonomy required that the right holder be insulated from moral scrutiny, persuasion, or exhortation by the government. Now against this backdrop, it's striking that in life's dominion, Dworkin answers the calls to take responsibilities as well as rights seriously. That is, to some extent, he engages in responsibility talk in justifying the right to procreative autonomy and the right to die. And Life's Dominion shows that the first charge that Dworkin's theory precludes governmental protection of the moral environment is mistaken. In fact, he writes there that America's political heritage is characterized by two sometimes competing traditions. The first is the traditional personal freedom. That's what we're used to hearing Dworkin talk about. The second assigns government responsibility for guarding the public moral space in which all citizens live. And he continued that a good part of constitutional law consists in reconciling these two ideas. Life's Dominion also shows that the second charge, that Dworkin's arguments for the right of procreative autonomy and the right to die entail a right to be insulated from governmental persuasion or exhortation, is also erroneous. For he argues that the rights to abortion and euthanasia do not preclude government from pursuing the goal of responsibility, encouraging people to exercise these rights responsibly by, I quote, treating decisions about human life and death as matters of serious moral importance. That is, while state governments, as he says, have no power to impose on their citizens a particular view of how and why life is sacred, they, I quote, do have the power to encourage their citizens to treat the question of abortion seriously. But Dworkin is at pains to insist upon the distinction between, on the one hand, government encouraging responsibility, and on the other hand, government coercing conformity with the majority's conception of the responsible decision. In short, 
he emphasizes the distinction between responsibility and coercion. And he's equally at pains to maintain that even if the rights to abortion and euthanasia are not rights of persons to be insulated from all others in making their decision, it is the person's right to make the ultimate decision. And here he hews very closely to Casey's language along those lines. Now, Glendon might counter by charging that Dworkin in talking about responsibility has done little more than co-opt the language of responsibility in service of a liberal theory of autonomy. And I think she certainly would argue that his talk in Justice for Hedgehogs of individual responsibility for one's own life is nothing more than responsibility dressed up in the garb of a liberal right to autonomy. By contrast, I think progressive proponents of responsibility like Robin West were heartened by Dworkin's proposal to take responsibility seriously in the exercise of rights cherished by liberals. And I think the same can be said for, by, for some proponents of a moralized liberalism. Now, I hasten to say that I think Dworkin's program for taking responsibilities as well as rights <coughs> seriously is sound. Here I'll ask whether it's consistent with or coherent with the rest of his work. For example, <clears throat> is it consistent with Dworkin's repeated statements in Justice for Hedgehogs that government must respect individuals' responsibility for their own lives, even though protecting one's, one person's ethical independence may impose costs upon others? And is it consistent with the latitude, uh, is the latitude he allows government to moralize to encourage responsibility consistent with all of his statements in various works that government cannot improve persons' lives against the grain of their convictions that it is not doing so. I believe it is because while Dworkin leaves room for governmental moralizing, he protects persons' right to make the ultimate decision. And I think this puts in relief an important feature of Dworkin's political philosophy and constitutional theory that's been present in his work from the beginning, but which perhaps has not been fully appreciated. Namely, his theory of taking rights seriously rests upon a theory about the permissible grounds for governmental decisions. It is not upon a fundamental interest theory of rights. That is, he doesn't ask what rights are necessary to enable persons to develop and exercise their autonomy. It's not a fundamental interest theory of rights. It's a theory that places grounds on, uh, uh, per, it places limits on the permissible grounds for governmental decisions. And therefore, when Dworkin castigates government for being tyrannical, oppressive, or the like, He's not objecting to, or he is objecting to government ramming down people's throats conceptions of the good or of the intrinsic value of the sanctity of life or to government's coercing people's beliefs or actions regarding such conceptions. He's not objecting to governmental moralizing short of coercion on these grounds. But we should ask whether Dworkin's argument may open the door generally to governmental moralizing and encouragement of responsibility with respect to rights across the board. Responsibility developed in the context of abortion and euthanasia may prove to be an idea that is not easily cabined. So we should ask how general is Dworkin's endorsement of governmental efforts to encourage responsibility in the exercise of rights. And I want to observe that while he's gotten on the responsibility bandwagon with respect to abortion and euthanasia, he emphatically has not done so with respect to freedom of speech. For example, uh, may government encourage people to engage in political expression or to do so responsibly? Or may government encourage people to respect one another as free and equal citizens or pursuant to that very great political value not to engage in hateful racist expression? I think he's largely eschewed responsibility talk in talking about freedoms like freedom of expression generally. Now in closing, I want to speculate that in life's dominion, uh, or life's dominion may have this particular emphasis upon uh, this other form of responsibility talk, allowing wide latitude for governmental moralizing, in part because it is a work of public philosophy. That is to say, he's trying to resolve a divisive issue in the political forum. He's trying to engage with people who vehemently disagree with him. And he's trying to engage in what he calls in life's dominion, philosophy from the inside out. He distinguishes philosophy from the inside out from philosophy from the outside in. Justice for, uh, and he even says that theories constructed from the inside out may be more likely to succeed in the political forum. Justice for hedgehogs, by contrast, seems less a work of public philosophy so understood 
than a form of philosophy that simply and vigorously argues for the truth of the matter and for the unity of value across ethics, morality, justice, and law come what may and irrespective of what anyone else who vigorously disagrees might think. So in short, there may be this difference of appearance regarding uh, the latitude he'll allow for governmental moralizing because the works are two different forms of political philosophy. I think, though, as I said at the outset, that Justice for Hedgehogs is compatible with life's dominion with respect to government's latitude to engage in moralizing and encouragement of responsibility. I'm simply urging Dworkin in the manuscript to bring this out more clearly. Thank you. Okay.